Hello everyone and welcome to Claret and Booze. My name's Nick, this is my daily ramble. I hope you're all well. Oh, I hope you're feeling as relaxed as me. You know, a couple of days about football. I'm off Twitter. All's, all's well in the world at the moment. I'm feeling very, very relaxed. I'm looking forward to the football coming back, but it's uh, it's quite nice to have a break from it all as well, isn't it? Um, as usual, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Drop a like on the video. And as you know, we're sponsored by the Kent and Sussex Tea and Coffee Company. As you can see from that little information pane up there, you can get 15% off using our Claret15 discount code. You can find a link in the description. Great place. Go and visit it. All right? <clears throat> right. Well, what we're going to talk about? What we're going to talk about? Um, I'm going to talk about Caduce and how him bursting onto the scene in the way that he did in the last 15 minutes. I know it wasn't his first goal. He's, he, he, he's done well in Europe and stuff like that. But the way he kind of just threw momentum back our way when he came on, Bearing in mind, at that point, we had um, Antonio and Suchek taken off, and we put Ben Rama and Caduce on, which do appear to be kind of Moise's stock changes at the moment. But this really did change the game. It did, you know. Uh, the first half, I think we were in, we were kind of in full control. We didn't have loads of possession, but when we had the ball, we made the most of it. Um, I do think there was an element of Newcastle not quite being on it. You know, they just had the game of their lives on Wednesday. Um, and we had an opportunity in that first half to really kind of put them to bed. And yes, I know we also played on Thursday and we had a, a day's less rest. A day's less rest, I should say. But look, Newcastle weren't at the races. They weren't. Um, second half, completely different. Um, it was a combination of them coming out after getting a rocket up their ass at half time, which we've heard. We've heard from Newcastle players. Eddie Howe went mad, apparently. Um, they came out all guns blazing. We came out like we do... Every time this season, um, after half time, you've got this sort of 15, 20 minute period where we're vulnerable as hell. We come out and it's like, it's not waving the white flag, but you kind of, you've got to be lucky not to concede. If the other team are on it and they've got their shooting boots on, you're going to get, you're going to concede, you know, you're going to end up behind. David Moyes takes far too fucking long to make changes. He does. We can all see the trend of what's happening in that half. We can all see it happening. And it happens, and he still doesn't do anything. Um, it takes ages to get his subs on, you know, that pisses everyone off. Uh, he's got people standing there on the sidelines, five minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes. It's I think the record's 13 minutes someone, someone put on Twitter the other day. 13 minutes to keep your subs standing there, you know. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, Caduce, Ben Rama came on. Ben Rama didn't have as much of an impact, but Caduce, he was just popping up all over the place. I've already said this. He was a breath of fresh air, energy, um, really, really precise passing, fine space, you know, drifts into space. And his shooting was, well, the, 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 the goal was phenomenal. You know, he really, really took his chance. I hate my dog. I do. Can you hear him? He's outside. I've locked him out of the room today and now he's abusing me through the door. I don't know whether he's Moyes out or Moyes in. I can't, I can't work it out, but he's definitely... Something Moyes related. <clears throat> but um, the fact of the matter is, Caduce is going to have to get um, brought into this team by David Moyes. He's, he's going to have to. There's, he's got no no choice. You know, even, even if he kind of holds off for a game or two, we can see that Caduce is the type of player, the fans are going to want to see him, and Caduce is going to make an impression whenever he comes on. He's going to force his way into that team. So who is going to come out? I think it's quite obvious who is who should come out. Because I think playing four central midfielders is too heavy. We don't need that. Um, we all know that the midfield three, in my opinion, this is no nothing against Suchek, because Suchek's having a better season. But it's got to come down to picking your best players, not just shoe in your favourites in. You know, great, we can have Suchek on the bench, you know, or start him against certain teams when we need to pack out the midfield. But a midfield of Alvarez at the base with Paqueta and James Wall Prowse as number eights doing defensive and attacking duties is more than enough for any team. More than enough. Alvarez doesn't need help in defensive midfield. <clears throat> he's he's more than a competent central defensive midfielder. He's he's a beast. He's a beast. You know, if anything, you'll confuse things. Just let him sit at the base in front of that defence and let the other players do what they can and then filter filter the threat towards him. And he will deal with it. He will. And if they get past him, we've got a good defence that can deal with it as well. Um, but that's what should happen because I do think that 
um, Antonio can still do a job for us. I do think he's uh, he he needs support. Like for instance, the other day when he came on, it just it just so happens that when we play Antonio, we play in a particular way, which means that Antonio ends up isolated and having to do things on his own. And if he isn't in full beast mode, he can't do it. He looks rubbish. But he's still a threat. He's still good. If you was to have Antonio on when we was going for the game, when we're going for the game, there's no reason why that can't be successful. If you remember back to the 15-16 season, when you had Pyatt on one side and Antonio providing that threat from the other. Two completely different types of player, but it worked. You know, if, if you can somehow fit um, Caduce, um, Antonio and Bowen into that front line, make it dynamic, like we saw against Newcastle, where you saw the dynamism of Piquetta, Bowen and, and Caduce switching sides and, and just sort of taking turns at going up front, confusing the defence. <clears throat> That's what we should do. And when you've got that creative spark from both, obviously, Piquetta, but from James Wall-Prowse with his passing as well, you know, we're, we're, we're really onto something there. We know we've also got the attacking impetus of um, Emerson down the left-hand side. I don't necessarily think we should be relying on Soufal to attack. I don't. Um, yes, he's got a few assists this year, but if you're playing Caduce and Bowen in the team that are going to be kind of gravitating over that side of the pitch. I don't think you necessarily need Soufal bombing up because he hasn't got the legs to get back. And that means that somebody else has to compensate when he does go up. I think that Emerson is the attacking player. If you're going to if you're gonna do that on either side, do it on the left side. Let Emerson go up and down. Let him go and support the attack. He's a better player. Uh, he's, 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 he's got a better delivery. He's more, he's more cultured. He's quicker. Um, and he can get back when he needs to as well. He can. He's not super fast, but he's not slow. Um, so that's what I think should happen. I think you should always have Soufal and the back two should always be back with Alvarez shielding. You know, then you've got a back four that you can form if you need to. You know, a centre back can split out, cover for Emerson, and Alvarez drops in. You know, so I just think that we need to stop setting a roadblock. I've been saying this for a while. Um, listen, if, if David Moyes has got this obsession with with the low block and, and implementing it in, in that way. I just think he can do it, but maybe do it the other way around. Um, I know we beat Brighton, but if you look at the way that Villa beat Brighton, it was very different. So Villa came out and they literally pressed and got in Brighton's faces. They pegged them back. They blitzed them. They blew them off the park in the first half. Yes, Brighton had some chances as well because Aston Villa were so advanced. But, but Villa were better. They were far better. Brighton didn't know what to do. They was uncomfortable. Brighton are a team that liked to have the ball. Villa weren't having it. They weren't letting them have the ball at all. And they went in uh, They went in three up at the break. And then in the second half, what Emery did was he kind of forecasted what De Zerbi was going to do. And he went, no, we've got our lead now. What we're going to do, we're going to sit back and we're going to play counter-attack. That's kind of what you do. They scored another three goals in the second half. I think that's, if you're going to do it any way, do it that way. You know, play your football, get your lead, a decent lead, not one goal, and then go to a counter-attacking game. Anyone would accept that. But trying to kill the game like we do and then just trying to sort of smash and grab, I just don't think it's necessary. I, I don't. I think we've got a team that's capable of so much more. We've got brilliant individuals in this team. We've got to get Caduce in there. So if you imagine that, if you imagine having having just, just those two, Caduce and Paqueta in the same starting lineup. You know, it would be outstanding with Bowen's threat. Bowen not having to worry and get back and cover Soufal because Soufal's back there doing his job. He's not fucking bombing up the pitch trying to put a cross in. He's back there. Bowen can concentrate on attacking. So you've got that Bowen, Caduce, Paqueta, and you've got Antonio, that chaotic influence up there, scaring the shit out of defenders, battering people. You know, I think you need that as well. You do. That does get overlooked. And then from the bench, you know, we've got four nails. We've got Ben Rama. I just think there's so many things that we could do um, to improve what we're doing. That's that. Uh, I think most people would agree with that. And that isn't a bad thing. You know, we're in a good position anyway. But we could get better, much, much better. Um, we could play in a way that would be exciting for everyone as well. I know that we live in a, a an age now where people are like, oh, you've got to move with the times. The West Ham way, that's just harping back to the old days when we weren't successful. Um, you know, all the all the new players of today are better than the ones that get labelled as icons, you know. It, everything about what West Ham was is getting dismissed now by this new generation because we've won a trophy that's only existed for the last two fucking years. A great achievement, but put it in perspective, okay? Um, 
it's 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 only it's, this is only the third year that competition existed. There's going to be plenty of teams that win that competition. I do think another English team will win that competition this year. It's a great thing for us. It's a springboard for clubs. It's brilliant. But don't make out like we won the Champions League because we fucking haven't. Um, hopefully we can go on to do that. Hopefully we can. But and hopefully we can win a cup this year. But I do think that people go too far with. Just I don't know. They're just kind of labelling labelling what we're doing at the moment as revolutionary. It's not. We're, we're conceding so many chances onto our goal. Some of the teams that we've that we've been absolutely battered on the pitch against that haven't punished us. You know that is going to start. That they will start to convert their chances. That's what I'm worried about. And I just don't think that we need to get there. I don't think we need to. I think we've got a brilliant, brilliant team. If you have a look at. Um, the way Wolves played Man City, for instance, after we played them and, and, and Wolves beat them. Wolves Wolves didn't sit back and, and roadblock. Yes, Man City had most of, most of the ball, but Wolves were bombing on. They were pressing them. They were trying to disrupt them. They were getting in their faces. Man City didn't like it. And guess what? Doku didn't roast anyone in that game. If you look at Man City against Arsenal, okay? Arsenal literally pegged them back. They, they played a high press. They got in their faces. They didn't let them settle on the ball. There's a common theme coming here. Teams that like being on the ball, don't make it easy for them. Be disruptive. Get in their faces. Um, and Arsenal were the deserved winners in that game. They were. Man City were, were not on it, but Arsenal played their game well. It weren't the best game to watch. They sort of counteracted each other. I've watched it back since. I didn't watch it live. But Arsenal were the better team in that game. They were. Man, Man City didn't like it. And this is the thing, this, this, this idea that you're playing this great team, you just got to let them have the ball and, you know, and, and, and but it doesn't have to be like that, you know? Doku hasn't roasted anyone since he roasted Soufal and all we was being told was how Doku's going to roast every fullback this year. Well, that's, that's not the case. But invite him on, invite him on, give him loads of space to run at your fullback, then yeah, he will. You know, how about give him something to worry about? Give, make him look over his shoulder. We all saw our... our Weak Doku was. That's where our goal came from. When Soufal slipped in behind him, and when he when he did eventually get up the pitch, and and that and we caused him problems. That is how you you damage teams like that. And there's a lot of teams like this in the Premier League now. There are, and we should be competing for top six. I know that Nigel said on the weekend that we shouldn't. Yes, we fucking should. We should be competing with Villa. We should be competing with Brighton. We should be competing with Newcastle. Man City, uh, Man United have fallen off a cliff. Chelsea ain't coming back this year. They're not. I know they're only sort of five, seven points off it, but they are way off it when you watch them play. There's all sorts of problems with those teams. They might be back next year, but they are not going to be back this year. They're not. So there's a space or two there. There is. You got. A, we, all, we all know Tottenham are going to fall away eventually, even with Ange, who I do have a soft spot for. He's, he's, he's managing Spurs now. It's, in, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. You know, they're going to fall away. It will happen. I hope they sit at the top of the league for about another month just so the fans really start getting carried away, you know, and uh, and yeah, and then the inevitable um, flop, you know, will come. And then we get to sing our favourite song when Tottenham fucks it up. Um, but yeah, so I, I do think, getting back to sort of the original point of the video, I do think we've got some potentially exciting times to come. Um, I think Caduce will get in this team. I think he's going to have to. You know, it's quite clear that the fans are going to are going to almost demand that he's in that team at some point. They are, um, and yeah, I'm just quite excited about it. I think it's a real good statement of intent the way that Jared Bowen has gone and signed that contract as well. The more I think about it, if you look at it, a six and a half year deal, you know, it's it's refreshing to have a player, a good player that could have gone elsewhere onto another, a, you could say, a bigger club. He was linked with Liverpool. And he's chosen to stay at West Ham. That that is refreshing when you look at the likes of Deck. And that does it's a statement for the club. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It really is good. And all I can say is, is that Tim Starton, I fucking hate that dog. Tim Starton and Mark Noble have done a really good job in selling it to him. It was no coincidence that Tim Starton was sat there on the t on the table when Boeing was signing his contract. Um, you know, Starton has, has, has obviously had a big impact on Boeing, talking to him about the project, which is what Boeing has echoed. In, in his um, interviews, he's, he's spoken about the project, the project, the project. What is the fucking project? We don't know. But I'm pretty sure there's something else. So God knows what's being said to these players. Um, 
and God knows what, because I don't think anyone would lie. I don't think I don't think um, Stein would lie. I don't think Noble would lie. So maybe there are big plans. Maybe there is something that's attracting these these players to come and to stay. Um, we, you know, you don't know. I don't know. Um, or maybe I'm just going dizzy because I've had a few days off football. Who knows? But yeah, for me, when we line up against Aston Villa, I don't want to let them have the ball. They like having the ball. They're an attacking team. Let's do to them what they did to Brighton. Let's play a back four. Sit Alvarez in front. Play James Will Prowse and Paqueta as the eights, and then I'm not being funny. Just go for a front three. Just go. Just go. Antonio could do some bowing, and just do that. Just just disrupt them. Disrupt them. Don't let them have it their own way. That's what I think we should do, and I think we could win that game. I think we could. I'm not saying we should because we're they're two good teams, but I think we could. Um, anyway, look, proper ramble, proper ramble. Slow news week. I just thought I'd do a little bit of a brain dump for you. All right. Um, We'll be back at the um, back on Sunday, and I'll put a post out on the community section as well, asking you to send your WhatsApp voice notes in, and we'll basically talk about whatever it is that you want us to talk about. All right, we had some crackers last time, didn't we? Hammers, Mikey. Um, yeah, there's he set the bar quite high on that one. I've got to be honest. Um, okay, all right, look, that's it from me. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, Friday tomorrow. All right, come and your wines. Sorry about the dog. <laughs>